And today we'll talk about basic properties and groups. And these will be properties that hold in any group, although we'll try to do some examples with, with, uh, with particular groups to make them seem more real. All right. And our first property will be proposition uh, 3.17 in our book, which says, um, in any group G, the identity element is unique. All right, so if it's okay with you all, I'm gonna start a uh, private portion and we'll, uh, we'll talk about this, uh, this uh, proposition that there's only one identity element and we'll, we'll actually prove it together. All right, let's go into a public portion. Welcome folks. I wanna chat about uh, a property that in any group, the identity element is unique. So we're gonna see how to prove this in any possible group. But first, let me just talk about what's going on here. Uh, how, how should we think about this visually before we get into the symbols? All right, so let's consider the group Z mod 4Z. Okay, so its elements are zero, one, two, and three. And you can draw the Cayley table or the, um, the uh, yeah, multiplication table for this group. It's called a multiplication table, even though you know the group operation is addition mod four. So here are the things that add up to zero, right? One plus three is four, which mod four is zero. Here are the things that add up to one. Two plus three is five, which mod four is one. Here are the things that add up to two. And finally, here are the things that add up to three. All right, so <laughs> great. Let me recall the definition of an identity. Okay, so an element E in a group G is um, an identity if A combined with E is equal to A in any order for all elements A in the group. All right. So who is the identity in this particular group? It's, it's zero. And you can see that because when I combine zero with each of these elements, zero, one, two, and three, I just get the same, I just get the same elements back, right? So it's sort of uh, this, this column here um, that I can look at to see that zero acts like the identity because it doesn't change. And same in the opposite direction, right? I can see that zero is the identity because when I combine zero with zero, one, two, or three, I just get zero, one, two, or three back. What would it, let me try to squeeze in a second identity to this group, okay? I'm gonna try to squeeze in a second identity and, and you'll see that it fails. So let me move this. Okay, so let me try to draw. T mod four Z um, with extra identity. Okay, I'll, I'll call that extra identity zero prime and we'll see if we can squeeze it in. So I'm gonna add another element to my group, zero prime. Okay. 
zero is an identity, so I know that this row has to be the same, right? So let me erase that for the moment. Okay. Zero prime is the identity. Okay, here, let me try that again. So zero is the identity, an identity. So I know that zero combined with one, two, or three gives me one, two, or three. And same thing, zero prime is an identity. So zero prime combined with one, two, or three has to give me one, two, or three. And then same down here. And same down here. And I already know how to combine with one with one and uh, two with one. And um, I already know how to combine three with various things. And I already know how to combine three and two. I'm sorry, Henry. Yeah. You have like a little bar that kind of uh, covers part of the, the screen, I guess. Do you see it as ah. well? Oh, now it's gone. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. somehow, somehow like your mouse movements affects it. I see. Um, I'll keep an eye. Thanks for letting me know. So what's going on is we don't really know what to put into these squares, all right? So zero combined with zero. I mean, maybe you think that's the identity zero, right? And zero combined with zero prime, or zero prime combined with zero prime. Maybe you think that should be the identity zero prime, okay? But, but what should you put in, in these squares right here, okay? If, if zero is the identity, then zero combined with zero prime better give you back zero prime. Right? So from one perspective, I feel like I should put zero prime here because zero is the identity, okay? But zero prime is an identity. So when I combine zero prime with zero, I shouldn't change zero. So from that other perspective, I should have a zero here. Okay? Let me say that again. So since zero is an identity, when I combine zero with zero prime, I better not change zero prime. So I want to put a zero prime there. But the reverse perspective is, since zero prime is the identity, when I combine it with zero, I shouldn't change zero. So I should just put a zero here. So, so what belongs in that gray circle? Should it be zero or zero prime? Well, that's the main idea of, of this proof. We're going to prove that in any group, the identity is unique using this observation. I need to put both zero and zero prime there. And the only way I could do that is if they're equal. Public questions so far? All right. So let's prove this. I'll be brief and then I'll leave time for private questions. Okay. So let's let's prove that the identity is unique. Suppose both E and E prime and my group G were identities. Okay. We're going to prove that E is equal to E prime. Okay. So I'm leaving myself some space, but we're going to prove that E is equal to E prime. Hence, the identity is unique. We're going to prove there's only one identity. Do you all see how this will accomplish our goal if, uh, if, um, if we're able to show that E is equal to E prime? It's because maybe there are many different identities in this group. Maybe there are 100 different identities. But we've proven that any two identities are equal to each other. They're the same element. So there can only be one identity. Okay. So how do we do this? One way I can write our first identity E is as E times E prime. Okay. And that's because E prime is an identity.
right? Multiplying E by E prime doesn't change E because E prime is an identity. But also E is an identity. So E times E prime doesn't change E prime, right? So E times E prime has to be equal to E prime. And this is since E is an identity. Right? So <laughs> we have proven that E is equal to E prime because E is equal to E times E prime because you know E prime is the identity, so it doesn't change E. And then we, we explain how E times E prime is equal to E prime because E was the identity, right? So, so multiplying E prime by E is going to change E prime. That's, that's the entire proof. We started with two arbitrary supposed identities, and then we used the fact that E was an identity and that E prime was an identity to show that E and E prime are equal. So, so therefore, any two identities elements need to be equal to each other. And so the identity element in any group is unique. Public questions. Thanks so much. <laughs>